Okay. So this is called a workshop. That means besides me working, you're meant to work because nobody can do the work of forgiveness but you. Now, all of you have probably come because if you have any type of relationship, someone has hurt you or betrayed you, deceived you, disappointed you. It's hard to get through life without that happening. Is there anybody in here who has not been hurt or disappointed or deceived or betrayed? Okay, so we're all here on the same page. Me too, right? So before I start, I'd like you to think about who you want to work on, wanting to want to want to want to want, however far you want to do it, to forgive. You might not be yet ready to want to forgive, but there's a part in you that wants to want to forgive. Because when you think about this person that's hurt you, it hurts you, right? So take a moment and write down what you write on your page is confidential, private for your work. So take a moment and start with that. Because if you don't acknowledge the pain and you don't acknowledge that you want to want to forgive, you're not going to forgive. So. What is forgiveness? We use that word very easily. What does it mean to forgive someone? When you think of the word forgiveness, what does it mean to you? And I'm going to write that down. Like, I like six. Six words. What does forgiveness mean to you? Peace. Peace. Letting go. Letting go of what? The anger. The anger. Could be. Okay. Validation. Forgiveness is validation. You like validating your own pain. about the person all the time. So peace of mind. So I'll put that up here, okay. peace of mind. There's a lot of peace, but that's one piece of peace. Acceptance. Acceptance. Opening yourself. Opening yourself. So can we say open hearted? Is that okay? Your pardon? Atonement. Atonement. At being at one in the moment. When you think about when you need to forgive someone, where are you? When you need to forgive, when you're in the place that there's someone that is needing for you to forgive, most often it's happened in the past. Right? Sometimes that past could be five minutes ago. Sometimes it could be five minutes, I mean five days ago. Sometimes it could be five years ago. Or I've had clients who are holding on to pain that happened 50 years ago, as if it happened five minutes ago. It stays very raw. So at one, with the one minute, it's like that, what I'm going to use is that you're back in the moment. You're at one in this moment. You come back to present time, and that person probably isn't, that isn't happening right now. But you're still, with your head, remembering what happened and it's as if it is still happening. It's like a clean page that never happened with, never happened. Okay, so clean slate. Clean slate. It did not happen again. Fresh start. Clean slate. It did not happen again. It's like wiping the past. Yes. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go on. Think about it because I just have a lot. You, you look like you really want to say something. <laughs> peace, peace in the family. Yeah, okay. So it creates peace not only in your own mind, personally, internally, but allows for there to be um, peaceful relationships. So peace also in relationships. And we could keep on going. Sounds good. 
Okay, yet it's not so easy. Sometimes it's not so easy because people have a misunderstanding of thinking what forgiveness is. So I want to go and say what forgiveness is not. It's not justifying the action. Exactly, good. It's not justifying the action, not. Not, not, not justifying, okay? Not discounting the pain. Not discounting your own pain. So it's not ignoring that you were hurt. It's not, and that same thing, it's not pretending. When you're, to, when you're wiping the slate, it's not by pretending or ignoring. Okay? It's not pretending. It's not, it's not trying to distort reality. What else is it not? Sorry. No. <laughs> You're doing well. It's not always just for the other person. It's for yourself as well. Say that again? It's not just for the other person. It's for yourself as well. So right. It's, it's not, not for the other Right. Person. It's not for the other person. Sometimes the other person doesn't really care less, right? Which is pretty sad, but that could be. So it's not for the other person. Just want you to know it's not condoning the act. Big distinction. We're making a separation between the act, which we're not justifying, and we're not condoning, but we're looking to see if we could forgive the person very different. Can we let can we move into a place of anger and pain to a place of forgiveness? And there are steps. It does not happen by just saying I forgive the person. Okay? It just even if you want to forgive the person, that's where you start by wanting to forgive the person. It's a Right, it's going through a process. It's going through a workshop. Okay, there's no, you know, there's sometimes if, if, if it was so easy, then what, when it's easy, we call it excusing. You know, when you come in late and you say, excuse me, I'm late, or your mother writes you a note, please excuse her for her tardiness, or, you know, or there, because there is an excuse and you ask for an excuse. That is simple. I'm sorry I forgot your birthday, I was in the hospital. So that's not such a big deal. But when you feel that you've, you've not, it's not just your birthday that's been forgotten, but you've been forgotten, yeah. right? That's when it really hurts. Okay, now when you think of this person that you're either hurting or being angry about, just take a moment and shut your eyes and feel as you think of this person and what they've done to you and feel what it is in your body. Just, just feel what happens to your body. Some people have ruminating thoughts. They cannot fall asleep or are thinking about it over and over again. What, I can't believe they did this, right? And you can think that for t on and on and on and on. You get caught up in what I call the drama, which is the lower circle. Some people, anybody with stomach aches, headaches, jaw, low energy. Studies have shown that when people are angry, they are um, less resistant to diseases. People, they've done studies with people who recover from cancer, and there is a correlation to anger, grudges, the desire for revenge. They've done studies on that. People who are open-hearted versus people who are angry, guess who gets better faster? Any guesses? Before I go on to the seven stages, I think you'll understand if we look at the picture of the self. It's a model. It's a model that I use in my work, and it's helped a lot of people. The center circle is what I call the present day aware adult. It, we're dignified in that place. We make a choice. 
when you feel that you're coming from a place of resourcefulness and assertiveness and dignity and justice, justice is actually even a higher self quality. There's harmony in a certain type of justice. But there's something in the lower circle, and the lower circle here has nine of them, but I act, there's many, many, many different um, qualities that come into the lower circle. And not that necessarily they're bad, but it's whether they take you over or not, or whether you use it. For example, there's the pusher. So Julius has been pushing for a number of days to get this event together. If he wouldn't have pushed, we wouldn't be here. But we also called a deadline yesterday at 11. I don't know if he went to bed, but you know, you have to have some place where you can make a limit. If your pusher takes you over, you don't know when to stop. So revenge, where there's a, just a desire to hurt someone or to show power over that other person, you hurt me, and I want to show that you don't have power over me. So the desire to show that you don't have power over me, I want to have power over you to hurt. So, that, so that's, that's, there's kind of like the teeter-totter syndrome. If you hurt me, I'll hurt you. If you're bad to me, I'll be bad to you. That, that's what I call the drama of back and forth. Now we're going to talk about justice a little bit more further on also. So the lower self, in the center, and again, it's not bad or right, we're all vulnerable. And we all have insecure thoughts, insecure beliefs. There's all been places that we've been hurt growing up. And sometimes we develop sunburns. And then some, somewhere, someone does something. Let's say if someone, if someone has waited for their mother continuously to pick them up from kindergarten, grade one, grade two, where you have to get picked up, and they're waiting out in the rain, and their mother comes a half an hour later, sometimes an hour late, sometimes forgets them, you can imagine when her husband comes home 10 minutes late. It's not the same as if she ha someone has not had that experience. So he walks through the door, and this lady, this is a true story, is furious at him because she feels like she didn't matter to him. A lot of times it's not the event, it's the interpretation of the event. Now, that's the job of the present day where adult to evaluate, to also understand whether you have an activated part of you that's in the lower circle. Right? So, we're going to be talking about the steps where we want to move from being wounded and angry and blaming and judgmental, all these qualities that we sometimes serves us, by the way, but mostly we get stuck there and they take us over, they're not serving us. And we want to move into the higher circle by going through the present day we're adult to move to a place of open-heartedness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, love, connection, even when it doesn't mean that you're going to reconcile. Because there's no, if you just feel this dynamic is going to happen over and over and over again, and you're just going to get hurt over and over and over again, and there's no possibility of changing it, it doesn't mean you have to be in a relationship, but you also don't have to be in pain. You can't forgive someone who's done pain to someone else. Okay? Forgiveness is between you and the person that wronged you. If someone's wronged your sister, um, it's very, like it's, it's, you can't forgive that ex-husband. You can forgive what the ex-husband, like, like if you feel insulted for yourself. You, one, it doesn't work. This process doesn't work because they haven't done you wrong. Letting go and forgiving again is for you. It's not for the other person. But I, I will address the whole thing, the need for justice. Maybe I'll just tell you the story, what helps me. It's a story from, from the Bible. Joseph was sold by his brothers as a slave, and he ended up in Egypt. Because 
of misunderstandings. They thought he, he wanted to be in charge of them because he told them dreams where he was in charge of them. Like it, was a, it was understandable that there was a misunderstanding. So they sold him. He goes down to Egypt. He's a slave. It's very interesting. He's put into a dungeon. I mean, he has his, he has his journey. And then the journey is that he's taken out of dungeon and he's made second to Pharaoh. And so when there's a famine in Israel and when it's time for, that we're exiled to Egypt, which is part of God's plan, he's there to set up a place for them. If he wouldn't have been there and there would have been a famine, they would have gone down there and all been slaves or second class citizens or whatever. He's, God put him there in order to provide a haven for them in, and a safe place to go in the beginning of the exile. Now, when the brothers, after Jacob dies, the brothers are really worried that now Joseph is going to punish them. Right? They stole him, and they are very worried. And they come to Joseph. This is a straight-up narrative in the Bible, and say, our father said that you should forgive us. It wasn't true because the father never knew the story. Joseph kept it to himself. And the brothers certainly didn't tell him. And Joseph cries. And you think I'm still holding on anger? You don't realize that I understand that you were just tools for God for me to come down here? I forgive you. He put God in the picture. That's on Thursday. I'm going to put God in the picture. It's very different when you have God in the picture and you know that God judges. The continua continuation of the story that's in the Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur Maksar, I don't remember right now, because I didn't, this isn't part of my notes, is that there's 10 martyrs that we talk about, I believe on Yom Kippur. The 10 martyrs are killed in horrible ways. And the Zohar brings down that they are the reincarnation of these ten brothers. Because for kidnapping, it's one of the commandments, you shall not steal. It means you should not steal a person. That it is the death penalty. The brothers did not have the death penalty. Later, you have to believe in reincarnation, but it makes sense. And it's actually, you don't have to read the Zohar for this. Most Maksorim write this down in the footnotes that it's understood to be that these are a reincarnation of those previous brothers. God is in charge of bringing balance into the world. Now, if Joseph would have put them in jail or he would have executed them, it wouldn't have looked so good to the Egyptians that a brother's murdering his brothers. They wouldn't have understood the whole story. It would have affected all our Jewish history. So sometimes we have to trust that there's a purpose to something and God is taking care of the justice and we can let go of the justice if we trust that there is a creator who is the ultimate judge that can put everything to, and put everything in its place. I do have seven steps. I will go through the seven steps, some more in depth than not. But really the first two steps, which is the one is to hold it, to recognize that you're angry. If you're not angry and you're not holding them accountable, then you don't need to forgive. So it's okay, you need to start with being angry. The second step, hold on for a second, is that it, there's pain and, and, and confusion, and it doesn't feel justified, okay? It doesn't feel justified. It doesn't feel justified vis-a-vis -vis the person, and it doesn't feel justified, where's God in the picture? If you don't have that pain, you also don't need to go through the process of forgiveness. These two, these two feelings or, or thoughts, blame is more a thinking part. First, there's the pain, usually, for some people. I mean, it depends on people's natures. The first and second really depend on like a person's nat um, nature. Some people go into, how dare they? He shouldn't have, she shouldn't have, whatever. And some people go, ouch, that really hurt. They forgot about me. You know, everybody else was invited to the, the symptom. Why wasn't I invited? Or, you know, someone's keeping kosher. Like, why couldn't they provide kosher food for me? Is it so hard for them to do it? Like, it's like that thing. But really, what's underneath that shirt is like you're feeling like you weren't taken into consideration, that you're feeling Feelings and your needs don't matter. Bottom line, think about what the pain is. Bottom line, this is my premise, like it's that center inside where you felt I, I didn't matter to the person. 
I'm not important to the person because if, if I would be important, this wouldn't have happened. If I lend someone $1,000 and they don't return it, they're using me or they took advantage of me. How could they do that if they care about me? Right? This is bottom line. If you take it down, 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 it's because I don't feel that I really matter. And that hurts. And it hurts to hurt, so then we get angry. That person is a jerk. Or that person is dishonest. I don't want anything to do with that person. And then what are we trying to do is protect ourselves from the pain. We make them all wrong, and we get very, you know, self-righteous, right? And what is that? That's the lower circle. If you look at the defender, we want to be safe. We want to feel safe. We want to feel accepted in our relationships. You know that not forgiving hurts. Because you're stuck with the pain. The other person could be in Jamaica and not care less or actually be dead. Now, I have a friend, Claire, and I've I've asked Claire if she would do me a favor and plug in the mic that microphone before I had this microphone. So I, I'm asking, I'll come back to this microphone. I'm asking Claire, Claire, would you, as my friend, would you plug this into me? Now, meanwhile, she's had a grudge. And she said, oh, I, this is my opportunity. And she plugs it into a socket that, oh! and I'm being, Shocked and electrocuted. I go, Claire, you're shocking me. This is really a shock. Shut it off. Shut it off. Right? So anyway, I'm going around, dancing around, saying, look what she did, everybody. Do you see that? I asked her to do me a favor. And she plugs it into this shot thing. And she likes the power over me. Now, I'm dancing. And I'm wanting her. You put it in. You pull it out. Are you going to do it? Absolutely. Thank you. What happens when you tell someone I need you to do this and they don't do it? And I'm still dancing around. Some people do. Some people can't. Some people won't. Some people don't even know you're dancing around. She plugged it in. She went off. She thought she did me a favor. I'm going, Claire, Claire, come back. She's in her car and gone. No intention. Now, just as an aside, I asked anybody here, has anyone ever, has anyone not been hurt? And every, nobody put up their hand. Has anybody not hurt anybody? either on purpose, or by accident, or by unconsciousness? Can any one of you put up your hand and say, I've never hurt anybody? Sometimes on purpose, because we're angry, because we were hurt. Sometimes because we were unconscious. Sometimes we don't, didn't have time. Sometimes because we didn't know. I mean, I've called up people and they will say, oh, I thought you forgot about me. Yeah. Right? I didn't mean for them to be hurt or to feel that they weren't important to me. Sometimes I don't go to a sun club because I, I don't think I matter to them. And then the person will say, is everything okay? And I go, you notice I wasn't there? It wasn't my intention. It was my own it was my own negative thinking about my own value. And because of that I hurt someone. And they go, Oh, but you're really important to me. Of course I missed you. And I go, Oh, really? Sometimes because we undervalue ourselves, we hurt someone. Many different ways. So, recapping. Step one, stage one is know that you're angry and hold them accountable. Because if you're not holding them accountable, if you don't hold them accountable, you're not going to be able to let it go. 
Like if you just pretend nothing bothers me, and how do you know if it's bothering you? Is, is your relationship strained? Are you calling them less? Are you answering less? Are you making less plans to go out with them? Are you ignoring them? Are you pretending to be polite because you don't want them to know how angry you are? Okay. So anger. Anger means you're holding them accountable. That's the first circle there in the top of the lower circle. If you get stuck there, it's lower circle. Some people can be angry forever. Really forever. Okay, and I'm sure that hurts. And people will justify, every, everything will have a justification. I'm going to just say another thing about this model. Um, the ego likes separation. Because when you're separated, you can be superior. Well, the higher self wants connection and closeness. There is a part of us, the lower self, the ego, that wants to feel self-righteous, wants, feels powerful in being angry, and even there can be a times that we can get identified and enjoy feeling like a victim. Poor me. Life's so unfair. People are so not nice. Look at what they do. Poor me. There's people that that's how they get attention to themselves, from other people. They tell the story over and over and over again. I've had a client who, like, she told me a story, and I said, have you ever shared this with anybody? She says, yes, you're my 10th therapist. <laughs> I go, oh. She said, it's a good story, right? I said, yeah. Do you want, do you want, do you want to stay in this story? Like, what, do, what does it serve you? So that's the question now. How does it serve you not to forgive? What are you scared of if you do forgive? And you get a minute and a half to think about these two questions now. How does it serve you to stay hurt and angry, or in one of these lower circles, blaming, self-righteous, judgmental, you know, critical, whatever, and, what's, and what scares you to let go? Because there's a reason why you haven't let it go. And, 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 and it needs to be acknowledged, because if you don't know what it is, you're not gonna be able to provide another way for yourself. I've been doing a lot of work. Your turn to do some work. Because I can't help you forgive someone if you don't do the work. Okay, did every, I just want to know, did everybody come up with at least one thing? Because if you don't think about it, you're not going to find another strategy. You're using to hold on to the anger and the pain because you feel safer from being hurt again in the past. And, or, they don't deserve it. And they don't. Okay, 100% they don't. But when you say they don't, that means I'm going to hold on to this. this. You understand? She turned it on, and dead. I'm not letting go. And she's, whether by accident or not by accident, she's living her life. And I'm holding on. She was nice. She took it off. Some people do not know that it's okay to put it down and find another way from present day and we're adult in the center from a dignified place of to feel safe. If people take advantage of you, it's probably because you don't know how to set limits or boundaries. But it's all their fault. They should have known. I have a hard time saying no. Or I'm on the bottom on the right corner, there's the pleaser, which a lot of us like to please people, but then we want to be appreciated, and then we want it reciprocated, but the person doesn't know that you're looking for something back, and they think you love pleasing. And so they'll ask you again, and they'll ask you again, 
And they might even ask you again because you're saying yes. And then you go, boy, and you're resentful. They take advantage of me. Can I borrow a hundred dollar shirt? Do you mind? I need another hundred dollar shirt. Another hundred dollar shirt. Then you say, oh, you, I've lent you three hundred dollars. Kind of, a, I don't have three hundred dollars to return you. I didn't know it mattered to you. You seem to have a lot of money. You didn't say I had to return it. I can give you ten dollars now, <laughs> right? But you didn't set terms. You didn't ask for an IOU. It's easier to blame the other. So present day aware adult is that you look. Can you take care of yourself in a more dignified way, in a less painful way? What would you need to protect yourself? Is it speaking your truth? Most people, if you go up to a person, and this is what we're so much wanting from the other, is we're wanting it from the other, and if we can give it is like is the, for the person, like if you think about it, you really want them to acknowledge, I've hurt you, or I've disappointed you, or I wasn't there for you, or I let you down, and I know, and, and I really am very remorseful, and I'm sorry about it, and I was out of my mind. I don't know where I was, or what I was thinking. I was distracted, or I was overwhelmed, or I was caught up in other things, and please forgive me, and I will do my best not to do it again. Now, do my best not to do it again doesn't mean that's not going to happen again. Because how many times have you made resolutions that you're not going to eat chocolate, or get to bed on time, or not to watch three sessions on the television before you go to sleep, or many other resolutions that you make for yourself that you really want to do for yourself, or resolutions that you've made that, you know, I will be on time from now on, right? or I'll clean up after myself. Whatever we promise ourselves or another, and it's hard to do it. So other people will also state intentions and really mean it because at that moment they are in present day aware adult. They're speaking their truth, they mean it, they intend it. And then there's a weakness that comes up and they go into lower circle. Either they're weak or they're needy or they're scared or they're feeling vulnerable and they do something again from their old habits. That doesn't mean that they didn't mean it when they said it. Just like when I say, I know I shouldn't eat chocolate. I know that. My present day adult is committed to not eating chocolate. And my inner child is committed to eating chocolate. And sometimes that part wins and sometimes this part wins. Because I don't live my life at a present day where adult. I don't know too many people who do. What we're trying to do in our own lives is called frequency, intensity, and duration. And this is also what we want to offer others. The frequency of how often they fall into lower circle, or we fall into lower circle. The intensity of it. You know, like if someone, um, you have an argument with someone and they insult you, there's minor insults to major insults, right? It's the, you know, the intensity of it, like, you know, or even the intensity of how loud their voice is, and the duration of it. Very many people, when they get hurt, they withdraw. And the person, and most couples like this, God has a very funny sense of humor. The person that needs connection when they're feeling insecure is married often to a person who needs to withdraw when they're feeling insecure. Right, and that, so that creates more pain. Because the person who's wanting connection is trying to take care of their feeling insecure, and the person who's withdrawing is trying to take care of their, um, their pain. And they have two different strategies for doing it. At that moment, they could be in lower circle. That's, where the, that's why I have drama or circus. It's many, many circles. You know in the three ring circus? We have many different voices competing for attention. So the more often that we can move out from our own drama or appreciate that the other person's in drama, and this is like one of the stages, I'm not doing this in order, is that when you understand that people have their history, their vulnerabilities, their insecurities, their needs, and usually, except for people who are bad, and there are bad people in this world, there are evil people, either because they're psychopaths 
or because they've just been so wounded in their life that all they can do is take care of themselves. There are evil people, but mostly people are not evil. Mostly people are doing the best they can with the tools that they have coming from the place that they came from. Isn't that true of you? That you're doing the best you can with the tools that you have coming from you have and what tools that you know to do. And so some people do not have very good negotiation skills. Some people do not have very good communication skills. Some people don't make requests very respectfully, usually because they're scared deep down. Okay, I remember my teacher. Okay, stage one is the anger and the blame. If you're not angry at them and you're not blaming them and they didn't do something wrong, then you don't need to forgive them. Okay? Of course you're going to be angry and you have justification. We're not arguing with about that. Number two, you are feeling hurt, disappointed, pain, wounded, sad, something. Because if, if you could blow it off, you wouldn't need to be here. Three, there's some kind of fear of moving forward and resolving it. You need to identify it. Number four, responsibility and self-growth. I'm talking about that way more on Thursday. Five, understanding, compassion, and appreciation. Appreciation means looking for the good side, good points. Claire's been a good friend. Sometimes you're willing to overlook something because of the relationship. Even though she plugged it in, you know what, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Ever heard of that expression? Don't we want the benefit of the doubt? When it says love your neighbor like yourself, the same things that you would like to offer it. So, understanding and compassion. That means moving from the lower circle that has all the drama and all the pain and all the anger. I want you to know there's a lot of people that that's where they feel alive. Their energy comes from feeling sorry for themselves, asking other people to feel sorry for them, or being caught up in self-righteous. And they don't know who they would be without it. If you don't like living there, then you need to use your present day wear adult to move up to get compassionate eyes. I've been, I've been weaving it in, in and out as I've been talking. We're wanting God to forgive us. We're wanting other people to forgive us. We're wanting other people to give us the benefit of the doubt. That they didn't notice, or they didn't know, or they were tired, or they were busy, or they were overwhelmed. We want them to understand that about us. Can we understand that about them? That they have their limitations, their weaknesses, sometimes their culture, sometimes their experience. People who went through the Holocaust, we could, have to ex have different expectations of people that didn't go through the Holocaust. People who have who never been married might not be as have might be affected in some ways than people who have. People who have, don't have children do have children. So many different things. The way they were parented or not parented. We don't know how people, what people have gone through. I can tell you myself that I've been invited to people's houses for Shabbos and it looks perfect. I'm shocked when the woman calls me up and says she would like to make an appointment. I go, what could possibly be wrong? Everything looked great. And then there's a story that you, for a million dollars I wouldn't have guessed of what's going on. You know, when the storekeeper yells at you, or is rude to you, probably his spouse was rude to him that morning. Or he doesn't know where his child is. Or they're closing down his business. Or someone has been diagnosed with cancer. We don't know. And sometimes even when you ask them, they might not even know. Can we give the people the benefit of the doubt that for 
where they come from, what they've gone through, the tools that they have or don't have, that they're doing the best they can and might not even know that what they've done is inappropriate. The present day we're adult is resourceful, active, empowered, strong, clear, sees the whole picture. In the lower self, why it's little circles? Because each voice believes it's totally right. Every feeling has a belief. When people feel self-righteous, they have a belief and evidence to support it. When a person feels like it's not, passive aggressive means I'm upset, but I'm not going to let you know about it, and I'm going to show you without telling you. Yeah, I'm going to show you without telling you. It's not like stepping up and saying, I'm really upset. When we say we're upset to someone, and now it's step one to going through a process, um, this, this letter is actually, like a, it's, it creates the possibility for reconciliation. If you don't let a person know that you hurt me, or I'm sorry that I hurt you, then there's distance. It's actually, you know, it says do not hold a grudge in your heart. Guess where you're, what you're supposed to do with it? Not talk to other people about it, right? That's called Lashon Hara. Not to hold it in your heart. That's called holding a grudge. Guess what? Being revengeful is on that same list. Okay. What are we supposed to do? Talk to them about it. So if you think present day aware adult believes that the other person is not going to be in present day aware adult, you do not talk to them. It takes two present day aware adults to have a healthy, productive conversation. If you're in present day where adult, it's not going to be safe to talk to someone who's in drama. So you protect yourself with healthy strategies, assertive strategies. You're, you're responsible. It says, love your neighbor like yourself. Guess who comes first? They don't tell you that in the class, in the Torah classes. But if you love your neighbor like yourself, because I am God. Loving yourself, honoring yourself, respecting yourself. All that is present day aware adult. From that place, you can love and respect and honor the other. But if you're in lower self and you're pouting, or you're feeling like a victim, or you're in rage, you ain't going to have a healthy relationship. And you're not going to be very dignified. The ideal, the ideal, but we don't, not everybody in every situation is ideal. The ideal is that if you can go to the person, this is the ideal situation, and say, I want you to know before Rosh Hashanah is coming, because some people don't know about Elul, but Rosh Hashanah is coming. Everybody knows Rosh Hashanah, and everybody knows that it's a time for cleaning the slate. You say, Rosh Hashanah is coming, and I really want to take this opportunity to clear the slate with you. And you probably don't know that when you did or didn't do da 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 da, I was hurt by it. And I'm bringing it up because our relationship is important to me. And I really want, I don't want to be holding on to the resentment or the hurt. And that's the reason why I'm bringing it up. Not because I want to blame you or hurt you. I'm not saying that brackets. But if you come with that kind of an attitude, I'm really doing this because the support, our relationship is important. And I've been feeling like I've been holding on to this resentment or this grievance or this hurt or this disappointment. And I, my guess is that it's a misunderstanding. And I want you to know that often it is a misunderstanding. I'm shocked by how many misunderstandings there are. I'll tell you, um, there was a... Um, just an aside, I do this a lot, but in, in, um, in, in the neighborhood in Harnok where I live, people put up a sign to invite you, the whole building, to the Simcha. Because, you know, you don't, I don't know why, but that's, what, that's the custom, mostly. And the sign was up there, and there was a, a neighbor, and she was expecting her across the hall neighbor to come. The sign is there. Meanwhile, the cross the hall neighbor never saw the sign, and she thought she wasn't invited to the simcha. So she didn't go, because she didn't get an invitation. The friend, the, sim, the neighbor thought, well, the sign's up there for everybody to come. Of course she's coming. So meanwhile, she doesn't, one thinks I wasn't invited, 
and she's very hurt. And the other one thinks she didn't come to my simcha, and she's very hurt. Well, now they don't say hello on the, on the staircase anymore. They don't come out and borrow sugar from each other anymore. They don't come over Friday night to talk anymore like when the men go off the shul. Each one thinking that the other one's doing it. They happen just like, again, like God, grand designer. They both were clients of mine. They both tell me the story, and I realize, what building do you live? What building do you live? Ah, oh, same people. So I, confidentiality, I can't tell them that I know what happened, but I could convince them that perhaps there's a misunderstanding. Both of them were 100% sure that their interpretation, interpretation, was 100% correct. So unless you're willing to take an oath that there's no possibility of a misunderstanding, and I can't tell you how creative misunderstandings are. I'm waiting for someone on Grand Street in Harmdorf. We make up Grand Street in Kai Tai. Well, this was like the first week that I moved in. I know where Grand Street in Kai Tai is, and I'm standing there. Meanwhile, Grand Street is a crescent, and both sides are high tide and brand state. And this is before cell phones. Well, eventually I go home, and um, I'm quite upset. Really, underneath the upset is that I feel like the person stood me up, right? I'm hurt, but I'm feeling very upset. Well, I'm not going to call the person. The person stood me up. They should call me and apologize or give me an explanation. The other person's upset that I'm not at the right place. I don't know why we both assume the two wrong places, but it happens. And that's a simple physical misunderstanding that you're in the wrong, like, and you don't know you're having a misunderstanding. If I would have known that Grand Street comes out on two different ends, which obviously I learned, often we learn things the hard way. So this is the thing about Dan Lachavskos, giving the benefit of the doubt that perhaps the person might have misunderstood you. You know, when, you, when you're when you wearing gray glasses where nobody likes me, you put on these glasses and you know what you see? Nobody likes you. If you're wearing, gla if you're wearing a sign, kick me, people will kick you. There's always somebody that's going to oblige. If so, you have... People take advantage of me, people will take advantage of you. If you have a belief, you have a certain type of energy or a certain way of being, and it will happen, and it will prove you right. You're, now, then you'll say, see, I'm right, people take advantage of me. But that's because you're a pleaser, and you, can't, and you have trouble saying no, or you have a hard time setting limits, or whatever. Okay. From when you get to a place where you've gone through all these other steps, and now we get to six, what do you really want? Would you like a relationship with this person, or don't you want a relationship with the person? Guess what? It takes two. You can decide. You don't like the way they are. You can let go of the pain and not want to be with them. You don't have to be angry or painful or judging them, you can say, I don't like a person that I can't depend on. Because they're probably not going to change so much to be dependable. That's really what you need. You don't have to be with someone who's abusive. You don't have to be. Unless certain other needs are being met, and then it's your choice. Because you've chosen that even though it's abusive and you don't like the abuse, but there are other payoffs, there are other needs that are being met, and so you're going to put up with it, but then just take responsibility that you've chosen to do it because there are other needs that are being met, and that's your decision and your choice. And when anybody on the outside will look and say, well, why do you put up with that? Because they see one part, they don't see the whole picture. Nobody sees the whole picture. And you know what? Even you don't see the whole picture. So it's your choice. But once you make a choice, accept it. Don't keep, you don't have to hold yourself as a victim or the other one in the You can say, I don't like this behavior, but overall, it gives me security, or it gives me status, or it gives me a house, whatever it is. Then appreciate it. Appreciate why you're staying there. 
that lets go of your pain and it lets go of your anger. And you know what? Things might actually be a little bit less tense, inside of you at least. It's okay. Present day where adult evaluates the whole picture. And we can never judge why someone decides a certain way. But it's your decision. You take responsibility for it. So next stage six is you look at what your intentions are, what are your needs are, can you make a request for it, can you negotiate for it, or not. And if you can't, is, is it still, do you still want to be in a relationship? Your choice. Which leads when you're evaluating about what your intentions are, what your wishes are, what your needs are, then you can still let go of the pain. You can forgive the person for doing the best they can with compassionate eyes. You can forgive yourself that you're doing the best you can in the circumstances that you're in. And then you decide whether you reconcile or you don't reconcile. Does a person have to be married to an alcoholic? Does someone have to be married to someone who's abusive? Does someone have to be with... And abusive can be verbal or physical. It's your choice. Nobody, there's, the, um, there's, there's, there's a thing about being, giving people the benefit of the doubt means like not to be judging them that they did something deliberately bad, deliberately bad. It's like saying like the person is doing the best they can with the tools that they have available. You don't have to like them, but you don't hate them. There will be people that like you a lot. There will be people that dislike you a lot. There will be people that you like a lot, people that you will dislike a lot. But that's different than hating them. Hate is poison that hurts you. It's okay to not to reconcile. Forgive the definition of forgiveness was never reconciliation. You can look in any dictionary. You can forgive a loan. That means someone owes you $1,000, and you might realize that they just don't have the where for all to give it back. Now, you could just keep them in debt, and you can feel like they're owing you that money, and you can be resentful, and they can feel that, pain, like they can feel that you're resenting them, and then they can end up feeling embarrassed to see you, and they just don't have the money. Possible? So now you don't have the money, and you don't have the relationship. Have you won? Now, if you really trust that they don't have the money, and they, if they could, they would. So why would you want to lose the relationship as well as the $1,000 and pray for them to win the lottery or to get a job, <laughs> you know? But there's a lot of people that borrow with the full intention of paying back, and they want to pay back, and they're embarrassed that they're not paying back. And it hurts them that they're not paying back. And now they're embarrassed, and you're angry, and it's just more pain. Now, there's another person that just keeps on borrowing money, and they're, and they're using it for drugs, so they're not looking for a job, and you're resenting them, and they feel, you feel like, you know, they're just not doing it. But then why did you keep on, you know, there's one loan, and you don't get it back, and you realize they're not responsible, why did you lend them the second? Sometimes we set ourselves up. Anything that you do from the higher circle is always guaranteed to be a win-win. It's always a win-win. Now, even if you decide not to reconcile with the other person, just the very fact that they know that you're not hating them or grudging against them or um, wishing them ill, that's already a service. You freed, like it's me letting go of this cord, it's letting it go, like we're no longer attached through negativity. Right, it creates more positive energy in this world by just letting go of the negativity. And the other person is does feel it. I, I want you to know, like I've been doing this workshop for over 20 years, and often everybody of you have thought about somebody. It'll be interesting. Come back and tell me if anything shifts between now and even Thursday. People have told me that they've gone home, and on their answering machine, from people that they haven't heard from for years, there's a call saying, you know, I'd like to talk to you. Because you shift your energy where you're more open-hearted, people feel it. 